Thank you very much for tuning into the Situation Room. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. 94.4 Nairobi, Malindi 97.7, Nyeri 90.9, Eldoret 96.7, Nakuru 96.0, 102.5 in Kisumu, 87.9 in Mombasa. We live stream the show www.spicefm.co.ke. We're also on Twitter at SpiceFMKE, Facebook SpiceFMKE, and YouTube. Our channel is SpiceFMKE. In the room, CT Muga, Nduoko, Eric Latif, and we are now joined by Professor X. Sen Iraqi is an economic analyst, uh, economist, analyst, lecturer, University of Nairobi. You, he's the man who is here to help us uh, advise the CS for the National Treasury, or Kuritani, <laughs> on what needs to be done to ensure that Kenyans are still here as Kenyans at the end of this coronavirus crisis. Asante Sana Prof for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. But before we actually embark on asking you the difficult questions we are about to ask you, mm. there is a saying that we brought into being this morning and we're going to go to, through it again. Yes. Today's proverb. Yes. You don't teach the paths of the forest to an old gorilla. Yeah, the gorilla has always been there. Thank you. So how can you teach it? What is, what's it very good at? Excellent. There you go. Uh -huh. Let's proceed. With Point question. is home. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Santa Sana for Where joining us. Where is it from? Yes. It's from DRC. Where uh, they have gorillas. The most appropriate place. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's if it came from uh, somewhere in Masailand, they would never have used a gorilla. They would have used something else. A lion, perhaps. Or a giraffe. Yeah, aha. Uh -huh. Or a zebra. <laughs> or an elephant. <laughs> yeah, so we keep going. so many animals. Right? <laughs> yeah. How we much further going, yeah? can we go? <laughs> the ones that remember, the, we can't say warthog. No, that one. It no. will not. You, you have to teach it every time. You have to teach it where it stays. <laughs> every new day. Prof, we are now faced with uh, this COVID-19. There is uh, what the traffic that you just had in Duoko reading, the traffic update. No people on the roads. You've used the roads this morning. I was surprised I took about 15 minutes from Westlands up to here. Mm -hmm. I normally take an hour. <laughs> See? <laughs> that was quite surprising. A quarter of what you've been doing. Yes. Just because, you know, we have less people going out, which means less economic activity. When people are going to work and all, then that's, not, that's what they're not doing now. So it's going to have an impact. Definitely. In the mm. short run, in the long run. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me also make some correction that I'm not an advisor to the trash, to the TA, not TS, we but are. CS treasury. All of us are going to be. I am not an advisor. <laughs> if I were, I would probably uh, give him an invoice at the end of this. Oh, mm -hmm. oh right. But uh, the issue of coronavirus and economics is a big issue. It's not just in Kenya, China, US, developed and developing countries. They are concerned about the long term and short term economic effects of the coronavirus. For one, it was unexpected. I don't think in the wildest of, of imaginations, anybody thought that this is where coronavirus or COVID-19 would take us. But it's, the, it's here now. Mm -hmm. mm. We are the people on the ground. We cannot behave like an ostrich. We must act. And I think that's the question you're asking me. Mm. How do we act? Yeah. I don't know whether you want me to, to rest before I answer <laughs> or I continue. Just start answering it. <laughs> I think there are two ways of looking at it. The first one is to look at the short term. Mm. If you look at the government lockdown that came on Sunday, which was very surprising because we were all resting on a Sunday afternoon, mm. <laughs> the president came alive. It was surprising because we don't expect that on a Sunday afternoon. But it was good because we were given time for the next few hours before Monday to digest that. Mm. Mm. It means that people are not going to move to their workplace as they used to. It means that the demand for some services are going to go up. Mm -hmm. It means that some people are going to lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. Think of restaurants. See, we keep on saying that people can work at home. But you cannot tell a waiter to work at home. Yep. So a lot of people, particularly in services, are going to be negatively affected. Yeah. So that's the short run. So in the, short, in, the short, in the long term, we are going to see the whole economy going down. And I will not be surprised if we have a recession in the next few months or so. Mm. And what the government should be doing worldwide, and individuals and private sector, public sector, is to see how we can reduce the effect of that downturn in the economic growth. Let's start what is happening at the international level. As soon as the coronavirus was realized in the US, mm. the Federal Reserve Bank cut the interest rates. Mm. The thinking is that if you reduce the interest rates, people are going to borrow money. 
they borrow money, they are going to spend it or invest it. And that is going to increase the demand and reduce the effect of the coronavirus. So that, me so that means if you are going to buy goods and services, there will be demand mm -hmm. and the, unless jobs will be lost. Hmm. Apart from that, some people, like, uh, let me give the American case because it is so open. They also say that the government could actually give money to people directly. You can imagine going to your post office and you find a check there. Or going to your account and see there's some money that has been put there. This is ordinary citizens or Ordin business? Ordinary citizens. So that if people get money, they can spend it immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, the alternative to that was to give people some cuts, some, some money through their, pay their payroll. Mm. So that instead of getting, let's say, 20% uh, in tax, the government can get maybe 15%. Mm. Yeah. But that take, will, will take a long time before it gets into your bank. That's why they're thinking of sending money directly to and the citizens. Immediate stimulus. Yes, sti immediate stimulus. It's also, and if, uh, they're also proposing about 850 billion do US dollars as a stimulus package. So the government can come up with new, new projects. So you, you remember that for you to create demand in an economy, you need to spend money. And the money can either come from the bank, from the government, mm -hmm. or from individuals. So the government is thinking that if we can give, if we can have some projects, big road, big infrastructure projects, then that will create demand in the economy. And that will trickle down to the people at the grassroots. Beyond that, there's a, a talk of tax, tax cut. But the most immediate one, the one that, that I saw being implemented immediately was a cut in interest rate. What the U.S. is doing is, doing it in, in, uh, is not doing it alone. Mm. The Bank of England is doing the same. Mm -hmm. The European Union is doing the same. The Chinese Central Bank is also doing the same. And a lot of big or developed countries are trying to cut their interest rates, bring stimulus packages to make sure that they reduce the effect of coronavirus. But let's come down home. I've not seen, I've not had, I saw in the papers today or yesterday morning that the central bank or the treasury is trying to do something about that. So I'm expecting the next uh, monetary policy committee chaired by the central bank governor. I suspect they are going to cut the interest rates. Mm -hmm. But the private sector is also acting. I saw MPESA saying they are going to reduce the cost of Transaction. transactions. I saw ABSA Bank giving some indications is doing the same. Mm. But if we are going to deal with a problem of coronavirus, it's not going to be you and me. It must be concerted effort. Everybody must play his part. Everybody has a role to play. And most important, we must stop spreading rumors. Mm. Like the ones I'm, I'm hearing that people are leaving the city mm. and going to the countryside. Mm. I saw that yesterday when I was going to Karatina, but it is parents going to pick their kids. Mm. Just because a certain naughty character took a photo of traffic jam the other way around does not mean that people are freeing the city. So I'm more concerned about the rumors mm. than even the virus itself. Mm -hmm. It's a misinformation out there. Misinformation. Everybody now is a medical doctor. It's actually a good point that you've made <laughs> because, uh, yes, until today, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, people are going to be picking their children mm -hmm. from boarding schools. So you, you expect that kind of traffic, that is right? It. That people living and going to, to collect their children from boarding schools. Now, back into the economy, and it, there are many things that have been said. One of them is, in, our, in the Kenyan case, what do we expect that our national treasury to do? There have been calls for scrapping VAT, like bringing VAT from 16 to 0%. Uh, also talking about income tax and such. What would that do to not just... Not just we, the citizens, who are the taxpayers, but also the government. I think that's a very good suggestion. You can zero rate everything to mm. zero instead of getting any VAT. Mm. Mm. But from my past experience, any time you cut VAT, the first beneficiaries are not ordinary citizens like you and me. Mm. It is a businessman. Mm. So how will the government make sure that the cut in VAT Reflect. re Translate is reflected the into mm. the price of goods and services? Mm. If the government can assure me that, I would support that. But I think that the easiest thing the government can do now is to give us subsidies so that you remember when there was shortage of maize from? Yes. Mm -hmm. The government can do that. Because if you interrupt the supply chains as it is happening now, because people are not moving, mm. then I hope there will be no shortage of food. Because that is so critical. So, because people have to get food from the source, mm -hmm. to the markets, the mm -hmm. supermarkets, and so on. So if people are not going to work, 
there could be some shortage of food and so on. So the government can give us subsidies so that directly the price is reduced. How about price controls? I don't like price controls myself. Just for this short measure. Why? You know, for now, I'd like saying to know why this is the like price, price it stays that way. This is the, what the president was insinuating when he said, you know, the uh, competition authority to ensure that traders are not holding and therefore creating shortage mm. and increasing prices. Why not just say directly? Uh, I think that you, the president is an economist. That's why you're so not saying directly. Because <laughs> anytime you control the prices, you know what happens. Mm. We have shortages. Mm. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I remember when I was a young boy, they, we had we used to have price controls. Maybe that's why I don't like them. And I would, my mother would tell me, go and buy me some sugar. And the price of sugar was controlled. So I would be told by the shopkeeper, can you also buy some matchbox? Can you buy some tea leaves? Mm. Can you buy excise books? Things that, that were not necessary. Mm. So I think because of my past experience, I don't like price controls. Mm. Unless you can tell us how you are going to implement that. Because it's very easy to, give to, to institute price controls, but how do you control that? So I think the best thing is to make sure that the, the, the supply chains from the farm up to the supermarket remain open. Mm -hmm. And as, soon as, as long as people are bringing food, we may not need any price controls. Essentially, you're favoring uh, the market forces mm -hmm. and you're saying let them do what they can do. If the, if the market are allowed to do what they can do, but uh, with the visible heart of the government playing a part, for example, if you look at a very simple market like sanitizers, you notice the price have gone up. Mm -hmm. Yes. They quickly skyrocketed. Mm. If you control the price of, sky of, of sanitizers, guess, guess what is going to happen? They'll be hoarded. Black market. Yes. And that will happen to another product. Mm. That's why I'm favoring the open market. I, I don't, if, for example, you have a problem of maize, I don't understand why we cannot start getting maize from where they're available. We have done that in the past. Yes. Because if more maize is imported, then the price will go down. You don't but need to control. No, you don't. The problem is con now... There's, mm. there's, no a short, there's, there's an issue of movement. Mm. Yes, that is my concern. But if you, if you check in the, global, in the global economy, the movement is... The problem is more of people moving, not Humans. goods. Mm. Not goods moving. Not goods moving. That was going to be another question I had. C.S. Um, Kago said yesterday that, um, I, th I guess he was speaking for a number of people when he spoke about the fact that imports now would resume and that when they were not going to put any kind of embargo on ships coming in uh, to bring goods into the country. At the same time, we were saying that people should restrict their movement, but the movement of goods um, is allowed. Would that then help with what we see, making sure that things remain optimum? That is, that's exactly what I expect. Mm. But it goods are not transporting themselves. Yes. Goods, w when, when goods arrive at the port of Mombasa, there are workers there. When the goods come from the port of Mombasa to our stores, there are workers there. They need there. to be so moved by someone. And people need to, to be able to access them to consume. I totally agree. But if you look at the number of people working on a ship or working at the port, we mm -hmm. can control that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you get people in a plane, 200, 300 people on a plane, or in a matatu, or in a train, it's very hard to control. But for goods, we can even use some bit of mechanization to make sure that... Actually, uh, if mm -hmm. you look at the mechanization at the ports, including ours, think of the human, just the human uh, transactions. They're limited. That's true. He all did, he all did, those containers are moved by equipment. Yep. He, everything did. that you have... It was Within, mm, yes. He, it was noted, however, that people coming off these ships then would go into quarantine. into quarantine. He talked about the fact that sanitation would take place. They were in talks with KPA to make sure that you know. Um, you're, you're talking about cruise ships. Yes, yes. No, 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 no. no. Cargo, 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 cargo ships. Cargo ships. Yes. Yes. Cargo ships bringing the people in goods. working within. Yes. Yes, would then go into the quarantine and then they would work in shifts to make sure that, you know, we don't have the same people who worked over two, three day period doing the same for the next two, three days. And I like that because already coronavirus is bad enough. I don't want us now to have another problem of hunger mm. or shortages. We already have corona as a very big problem at the national, international level. Mm. So if we can make sure that those goods and uh, those goods can be able to come, mm. we make sure there's quarantine for those who are working there, there's good sanitation. I think we can uh, deal with the issue of food prices going up and other commodities. Mm. Professor Axan Iraqi is in the studio with us. He's an economist. He's a lecturer at the University of Nairobi. We are looking at the impact that this thing is going to have on our economy. From the discussions and from what we read and from what we know is that it has not just exposed the underbelly of the government and its inability to deal with critical things, 
But on a plus side, would you not say that, one, it provides us with an opportunity for some honest conversations about what we are as a country, where we are, and also how it is that we can look at our commercial and industrial sector and how best it can actually be supported to meet such a problem should it ever arise? I can't agree with you more. I, I think you're one of the few Kenyans I've conversed with and you're looking at the positive side of Corona. Because to me, it's going to shake the nations and people are going to start seeing things in a different perspective. Mm. Take something like the health services. Mm. Already even before Corona, people are complaining that the health services were not sufficient. Mm. So if you now bring Corona, you shake the system mm. and people start realizing, why well, we're really ready for this. Mm. And we have the best systems. It's even going to shake the political system because you can see the BBIs have been postponed. Mm. So what are people going to start thinking between now and the time the BBI resume, if they ever resume? It's also going to look at the BBI, the, the coronavirus is going to start forcing us to, to start becoming more creative. Mm. Mm. For example, everybody is now saying, can we have online classes? Mm. People are now talking about the, st the stored project, the so-called laptops. laptops. Mm. People are saying, if we had laptops, then online learning will not be a problem. Mm. So I think, Toyota, uh, I think coronavirus has a positive side. We only hope that it, it will be more positive than the negative side. Mm. So if you look at the, the international level part of it, that, at the international level, Countries are now realizing that we are no longer islands. That used to be just a statement. Mm. But now people are realizing that no country is an island. This global village thing is actually real. That's true. Mm. You cannot stop virus stopping spreading to your neighborhood. So I think people are going to start now thinking more of a community. We are going to start thinking more of a global community, not just a country or a county and so on. So I see some positive side of that. And at the scientific level, we are going to see people fighting to come up with, a, with, with, with a, a cure or a vaccine. So we could say that uh, maybe the coronavirus problem will not even be solved by the, medic, the, by the medics. It will be solved by businessmen looking for profit. Some techies <laughs> somewhere. As they look for a cure or a vaccine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know whether you saw this news item that did not uh, bring a lot of traction. I think over on Sunday or so, or Sunday, I think it was Sunday afternoon. The German farm that's about to get a, a, cure, a, a, a vaccine. The one mm. Trump was trying and to... And then America's only buy it. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> so that's, why, that's, that's the economic part of coronavirus. Mm. So people are seeing not just the virus, but the economic the part opportunities. Of yes. Mm. In terms of uh, collection of data, we look at the informal sector you know, bearing a, a, a big responsibility of carrying the economy. Um, and now if you look at people making day-to-day -day wage what they depend on and then in the light of perhaps being asked to stay home and, and not come through how is that what kind of effect do you see this hab having on the economy at, at large uh, that's that's uh, since we started this conversation i think there's a there's a best question that has been asked this morning 83 mm. percent of kenyans are employed in informal sector but when you look at the prescriptions we are giving for coronavirus mm. they are targeted at the 17 percent people who are formerly employed. Mm. If you tell somebody from one of the slums to work from home, mm. it does not even make sense to that person. Mm. A lot of Kenyans work from heart to mouth. Mm. What they make today where they go to work is what they eat today. Mm -hmm. And I think we are not putting enough focus on this group, which is the majority of the Kenyans. Mm. So one of the things we need to, to do very quickly is to see how can we save the smaller businesses. Mm. And maybe one way out would be to give them some, some loan guarantees so that if I have a smaller business like a kiosk mm -hmm. or a saloon or a car wash, I can go and borrow some money and then the government guarantees that so that I can pay at a lower interest rate or be given a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. Because the informal sector, as you put it, is the backbone of this economy, mm. not the big multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. Mm. But we have not put enough focus on this group, which is very critical to the Kenyan economy. Mm. So I believe, and I agree with you, we need to, f to put more focus on that. Mm. So and this becomes one of my like suggestions. Mm. It becomes like a cheaper loan to the small businesses. Yes. We can give them a long term pay, mm -hmm. and then we can give them at a low interest rate. Because they, you can, they can pay at a low interest rate because they are guaranteed by, by the government. Because anytime you have a good guarantor, then you can charge a low interest rate. Mm. Okay. And maybe this is the time we need to, to go back to my friend. This may be the time we start to think again. You remember the Bishara Bank? Mm -hmm. In that Bishara Bank was operational, well capitalized. 
then there's a time we should be we should be saying we have this big bank here yeah. that can give that can start giving small scale farmers yep. a guaranteed drone. Mm. So a lot of rethinking would have to be done. Any impact to, on that to the government? Because I also uh, I'm constantly thinking, whatever the government is doing, it it's you're asking if they can afford it. Yes. Uh, and, whether, and whether it uh, it affects its operations. In fact, I can go back to my neighbor here when mm. he said, "Why don't we relate VAT so that no, nobody pays VAT?" Uh, if you notice, some of the big companies in this country have been struggling to get VAT refunds. refund. So the government also needs money. Yeah. So we also must look at the other side. If we cut taxes, if we say we are not going to pay taxes, why is the government going to get money? to fund its services, including mm. medical services. Yeah. So the government must, ha must get an alternative to cater for the shortfall. Mm -hmm. And do you know the, do you know the, the easiest source? Mm -hmm. It is what nobody likes. You start borrowing money. Mm. So Kenyans are already complaining you have overborrowed. And that's why you will get back to you. This thing is going to shake the way we think we about think. the economy, about relationship, about the government, about our funds and everything. So, but I think in the short run, we should probably borrow some money because if, if people Kenyans don't like hearing that mm. if we go to the international market mm. we can borrow at a better rate but the euro board despite all the controversy mm. so we can borrow some money or maybe get some i saw world bank giving us eight billion yeah maybe if imf should come in and give us some money then we can use that to mitigate the effect of not correcting enough taxes prof <laughs> shed some light now that you've mentioned the world bank shed some light on that money W what does it mean? It was, it's in two tranches. There is a, you know, 10 million and 50 million. Mm -hmm. What exactly is this? Are these loans? Is it free money? Is it, uh, are they, is it aid? Is it a grant? Let me expose my ignorance. I just saw <laughs> in the media that the government of Kenya is getting some money. Mm -hmm. And I would really want to know what they are going to do with it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Are we required to pay back? I'm not sure about that. Mm. But it appears to be just a grant because it, it looks to me like an emergency fund. So the government will probably put it into the best use. Mm. But I don't know what type of fund it is. I've not heard any details from they the They call treasury. it an part of the emergency fund that the World Bank has set up specifically for this COVID-19 uh, problem. I, I can actually now read the, the thread on the World Bank Kenya tweet. Huh? Yes. Um, so the World Bank has committed $60 million to help the government of Kenya respond to COVID-19, $50 million from COVID-19 financing facility, and 10 million from contingency emergency response component of transforming health systems for universal healthcare project. So there we go. But we have not been told specific at what the government is going to do with that money. Yeah, is so it, we're, is it buying sanitizers? Mm -hmm. where, where the government takes the money now is the issue. Is it building a solution? Can wants? we ask what, we would, what would we expect of a government with a fund like this to do, given this current situation? Coming from an economic point of view, um, what would you expect, Prof? I, I think I would go for the rolling fruits. Mm. Mm. The first one would make sure that uh, essential equipments are, are available. For example, if you look at one of the biggest problems of, of COVID-19 mm. is that people need ventilators. Mm -hmm. The medical workers need some special equipments. Mm. I've been seeing people in China and they putting on some interesting gowns. Mm. So we must make sure that all the medical workers have such equipments. Mm -hmm. We must make sure that we have isolation wards, isolation wards because I've been seeing counties saying they yeah, have, they have awards. Mm. I don't know how they were built in 24 hours. <laughs> uh, they really equipped because I've not seen anyone, anyone. Most of them are not open. We just seen a signboard. Yeah. So we so saw that a survey was done and quite a number of them are ill-equipped. That is right. it. Yes. So maybe that's one area the government, this funding from our bank should focus on. Mm -hmm. Make sure that we have isolation, isolation awards, the basic equipment like gloves, masks, mm. not for people like me, but for the medical workers. Yeah. And then the isolation awards are good enough to take care of any person who is taken as a victim of COVID. So it goes straight into this. Yes. That's, none none that of this money should increase. pay salaries. I, I, I think the government already has been paying salaries for the workers. Mm. I don't think we are. I, I, in my opinion or from my, the best of my knowledge, mm. I haven't seen that the government is hiring new workers. I think they're just hiring the existing workers. Yep. But if they are needed, we can also put that in. We can also hire them maybe for short-term contracts. Because to me, the most important thing is a patient mm. for now to make sure that anybody who has been caught with the coronavirus is rated, yeah. we stop the spread. Because if you know the, the way that disease is spreading, the most important thing is to stop, not even to isolate. Yeah. So let's make sure that uh, we use also that money for surveillance. Because uh, everybody is asking this person who had coronavirus, how did he get from Ohio through London, mm -hmm. through our airport, 
to Angada Rongai without anybody detecting. If the standard group can check my temperature outside here and give me sanitizer, mm. are you telling me that standard, chartered, uh, st- standard uh, group is doing better than the airport? And the government mm. of Kenya. And the government of Kenya. So I think there's also a bit of laxity that we need to, to, tighten. to deal with. Mm. We were speaking to the chairman of the Kenya Tourism Federation, Mohamed Arsi, yesterday. And he said, look, as a private sector, like at, uh, the, the hotel industry is already used to these kind of shocks. And what they do is they call up their staff, especially the coastal hotels. They tell them, look, we are going through tough times. Instead of laying you off, take pay cuts. And they all agree. Take pay cuts for or a period or of time. Or unpaid leave. Or unpaid mm-hmm. leave. And then you come back and we resume and work. And you were saying, why doesn't the government also look at it the same way? All those people who are working in government, especially the non-essential right now, talk about reducing your wage bill. That, that sounds very, a very logical argument from mm. an economic perspective. Mm. However. But politically, it's not very <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> you, you start hearing guys saying that our people are being finished. <laughs> that you are laying people off uh, politically or selectively. Yep. Targeted. Actually. Targeted. Mm. So I think from an economic point of view, it makes a lot of sense. But it's about time we, 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 you know, we, we bite bullets. And that is exactly what leadership is all about. At a time like this, you make unpopular decisions. You make decisions that people don't like yep. and live with the consequences. Mm. I and, I, mm. and I believe for now such de- decisions will, be ve- will not be very hard to make no. if BBI is real. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because nobody should t- talk negatively. They are <laughs> in the same boat. Mm. <laughs> and actually, it's an opportunity in a sense to make those hard decisions that previously you couldn't make. That's true. Yes. That's this why I still keep on agreeing with you that coronavirus will force us to think in a different way. Yes. It's a big opportunity. It, it, this, it's a massive opportunity. The if situation, take advantage of it. Mm. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Professor Axel Iraki from the University of Nairobi is an economist. He's here with us in the studio helping us to look at the likely impact of coronavirus on Kenya's economy and what the government and the people in the private sector can do to cushion themselves. 0719-012600. Any questions for the prof? Any comments that you'd like to make, 0719-012600. So the government should clear outstanding VAT refunds, cushion SMEs by reducing VAT and corporate taxes and zero rate taxes on essentials. This is what the chairman of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers is proposing. Tax refunds. The reason why they don't have the refunds yet is because the government is cash strapped. Is this likely to... Uh, is the government really cash strapped? I mean, I, I <clears> hear it often enough, I have to ask. Yes. Good question. That's why we. That's why I can see an empty mic there. We should be having a government official sitting, <laughs> sitting here to ask, to tell us some the of truth. those questions because <laughs> they're very hard questions. But I think uh, sometimes the government does not fail to give tax refunds because they have no money. It's because sometimes it's very bureaucratic. Look at those uh, unpaid bills for the counties. Yes, leading to billions of dollars. Even the national government itself. Yes, uh, I'm actually most of you. If I talk to you, probably owed some money by the government. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a very long time before the yes. the, the debts are verified, mm. and then until they are paid. But maybe, as you put it, this is a time to start cutting off that bureaucracy, so that people get their money, put it in their pocket, and start using it. And that's one way to stimulate the economy when people get money in their pocket. You know, uh, Professor... And, and we don't want to know where the government gets money from because we paid our taxes. We just want m- money. <laughs> we want to get money. In, in a time <laughs> gone by, when one did business with the government, you were paid through a check. Yes. It was a really tedious process. Yes. Then we came out of that and something that was almost magical happened. <laughs> yes, it was almost magical and you were told don't even follow it. You're given a date. Mm-hmm. It's like... The same thing that happens with our passports. And on that date, if the money isn't in your account by that date, then you call. And the money would end up in your account at the time that they had said. Magical. Even the issue of a passport getting to you or you collecting it on the day they've told you was mm-hmm. magical. I understand government bureaucracy, but does it have to take years? Because what we're dealing with now is not someone is owed money for months. It's years. Mm-hmm. Must it take that long? Now we have deviated from the issue of coronavirus to the issue of government bureaucracy. <laughs> Actually, government and, bureaucracy and are, is at the related. heart of the COVID, yes. And they are related. Yes. So that's why I agree with you that we have to start thinking. For example, nowadays, if I want to pay you some money, either use M-Pesa, mm. or I, I go to my mobile banking, 
and within circles you get the money. Yes, yes you do. And I think the government should do the same whether it is for tax refunds or any repayment as long as you have satisfied the requirement. And the beauty about that is that the money will get into the consumers quickly and we start consuming it mm. and, and start and they start earning the government starts earning from it almost immediately through VAT and so yes. on. Yeah. So uh, that's why there need to be some rethinking of how the government works. Because for a, a very, very long time the government was seen as very inefficient compared to the private sector. And at the time the government started to some extent behaving like the private sector. Mm. So that we don't hold money that mm. to be invested elsewhere. Like it's my belief that money is always more efficient used in private hands mm. than in government. Mm. So when you hold so much money in the government, you are stopping out of other people from doing their thing. Yeah. And the government to that extent is holding the economy hostage. So to maybe to counter the effect of COVID-19, the government should make sure all the funds that are owed to individuals and entities is paid immediately. Clear all the bills yes. as fast as possible. Whether at the county level or the national level. How fast can all of this happen? It depends on how much the government, how much the government, how much money the government has, mm. and the political will. Mm. I believe the government has the, the political leaders have the will; they can do anything. Mm. And the best example to show how much will they can carry and how much active they can be is to just go online and look at the number of people attending the BBI rallies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They're all coming in very large numbers. Yes. They would get helicopters and, and they've other. they've been facilitated mm. by the facilitated. government. Mm. So if we can use the same energy in BBI to deal with the coronavirus, I think this war will be won. Mm. And very easily won. USA is saying this thing could uh, last up to August. The kind of lockdown that they have. Stay indoors. It could, stay, it could last up to August. Looking in our case, we do not have a proper shutdown like they have in Italy. Um, but, you know, I, I, do you see us getting to a point where we are, the government tells us, look, this thing, the local uh, spread, lo number of cases of local transmission are rising so fast. We need everybody to stay where they are. That would be a very good, in fact, that would be the best way to react to that. But we must remember that Kenya is not China. Kenya is not US. Kenya is different. Mm. If you look at all these developed countries, they always, they always have a safety cover for the disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. If you lose your job, you get welfare checks. If you are disabled, you can get some disability mm -hmm. checks and so on. The aged. Uh, the aged and so on. Mm. So they are used to dealing with the people who don't have jobs and so on. Mm. As we don't have that. If you remember, even in the, in the best of circumstances, before COVID came around, Everybody in the streets was saying there's no money. There's no money. So and now we have rockers also. We are not for, we are forgetting. In fact, we are even forgetting about rockers. There's rockers. <laughs> now yep. there's COVID. Yep. Now, if you tell people who live from heart to mouth not to go to work, it's not possible. So Kenya is not going to behave like China or other countries. So what are we likely to do? I, I, so you're I, not telling these people not to go to work. They're yes. still going to work. So and what alternative do you give them? You're yeah. exposing you them to them? the risk. Yes. So if you don't, if you don't go to work, do you give them food? Do you give them alternative? And, and I want us to be more realistic on this issue mm. because everybody is giving China as the best example of a country that has, has, has dealt with this problem successfully. Yes. But I want to look at China more critically. More critically. Mm. China is a communist country. If you give orders, orders are followed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And chi China is very centrally. Managed, yes. It's a so command economy. It's a command economy. Yes. In Kenya, it's not. In fact, if you are reasoning very carefully, what Governor A says is not what Governor B is saying. Mm. So we already have people talking at cross purposes. So how do we make sure that we can learn from Chinese example, yet we are not like China? And it takes back to my friend that we must become innovative in the way we deal with this problem. Mm. For example, I don't understand why the response to the COVID, COVID crisis should not be centralized. So that if we have any money, it is used as efficient as possible. Because mm -hmm. now when we start dividing it to count A, count B, count C, yeah. there will be a lot of administrative and a lot of waste. Mm -hmm. So why can't we centralize that for now? Now when the problem is over, we can now tell the counties, take your ministry, take your ministry and so on. Yeah. So I don't think the lockdown that is taking place in US or, or Italy is going to, to, to be successful in Kenya. Mm -hmm. 
in fact if i was a government policy maker that would be the nightmare how much freedom do i give people yep. and how much how much do I control do? it's going to be very tough prof you're fairly experienced um you're a man who knows a lot so you are likely to that's, be that's that's what people say yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're somebody who's we are among those people who <laughs> are among them. you're somebody who's qualified to be named ps or cs in the national treasury yes so i want you now to behave as if if it were you what would you do let me let me make it very clear uh, to the Kenyan public that I was actually interviewed for a PS job. There you go. <laughs> Voila. I was listed <laughs> as uh, on the list uh, number 1033. Mm. 1033. Yes, I went for the interview, the final interview. Mm-hmm. But I was not given the job. I'm not campaigning for it. <laughs> I'm comfortable where I am. And I'm saying there's no harm if you did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I have a lot of good uh, good good wheelers here. Yeah. Yes. Good. So, can you rephrase your question, please? If you were the PS or the CS for the National Treasury, yeah. what measures would you um, uh, announce tomorrow? The CS Treasury is about to announce some measures tomorrow on cushioning the Kenyan economy. I think, I think the first thing I would do is to rewrite the budget. Mm. I think we have not presented the budget. Mm. So when I'm presenting the budget, I would write it. And I would put a lot of focus on the disadvantaged people. So I'd probably zero it out of essential commodities. Mm-hmm. Flour, mm-hmm. maybe sanitizers. A lot of essential items for the ordinary people like you and me, I would just relate to them. That so is essential for ordinary people is flour, yes. uh, cooking oil, yes. soap, yes. sugar, mm-hmm. tea, yep. tea leaves. Yeah, the most essential commodities. Water. Chumbi. Water. 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 For example, I would make sure that everybody has access to clean water, mm-hmm. whether you can pay or not. Because hygiene is so critical mm-hmm. in COVID-19. Then the next thing I would do immediately is to make sure that the small business have access to some strategic fund. So that if you're running out of cash, you can immediately go to the bank. And the, the government should have that facility in all the banks. Mm-hmm. So if I am a barber or, or a kenyozi mm-hmm. and I want some 10,000 to keep running for the next three months, I should go and uh, present my license from the city council of whoever has given a license. Mm-hmm. And that should be used to give me a loan. That mm-hmm. I should pay at a low interest rate. Right. And if I was the minister, I would... How I would, low? Yes, I would probably give something like 5%, something that is affordable. And if you have been having loans that you have been servicing, mm. and credit, credit reference bureau shows that you do very well, you even I would even better. give you a lower rate. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Those are some of the things I would do immediately. Mm-hmm. The next thing I would do at the national level is to cut the interest rate. So that people can borrow money. If you have had a project, a house, housing project, you don't stop. Mm-hmm. You go and borrow money and stop continue with it mm-hmm. and then uh, i would make sure that all the taxes that all the tax refers that have been due are paid on the spot and the government should use maybe some of the money from the world bank to make sure that this the man the man that is it, that people have not been paid is, is paid immediately mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then i would go a step further and stop be, be talking like behaving like an island i expect by now the president of the east african community president should have met by now mm. and come up with a concerted effort on how to, to deal with the virus with this virus in the region in the region mm. the same way the G7 are meeting together mm-hmm. the same way the the big economies are teleconference con- teleconferencing because they may not go and meet mm. so we should be seeing those people coming together and saying wait a minute mm. how does Kenya Uganda and the rest work together work together to deal with this problem right mm-hmm. because if you look at something like the, the Kenyan economy a lot of our exports go to Uganda So it is for our interest to make sure that whatever we do does not affect Uganda. Yeah. So that is what we should do at the international at the national at the regional level. Of course at the international level we are seeing World Bank mm. giving us some emergency fund and maybe we should now be talking of how to schedule some of the loans that we are supposed to pay. Mm. So renegotiate with renegotiate the, the, the paying terms. With, with people like China. Yes, yeah, so does that qualify me to become the next PS? <laughs> <laughs> If you are not make the next PS, but then there is a problem. We're, we're going out on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> you may find yourself on the street at one. <coughs> prof, uh, prof, I always say that uh, it's never too late for development. Yes. Um, it, c- it can happen at any juncture. And we see this now presenting a perfect opportunity to uh, probably work on the management of a country's economy. Um, would we... Uh, Would it be a beneficial thing if we then see the effects of this kind of rejigging of the economy uh, l- much later on, even after the pandemic has come and gone? That is my greatest dream, that this becomes an opportunity, as he put it, to rejuvenate, to go through an economic license. Mm. And let me give you a good example. The reason why the rates for 
and pace our card down to transfer money from one place to another for fast below 1,000 mm -hmm. is to encourage people to be cashless. Yeah. And my hope is that as soon as this coronavirus is over, we shall continue being cashless. Yes. Because maybe more than 90% of our transactions are online, mm. are, are cash. Already cash yeah. So maybe we can make that a habit. And all these changes we are coming up because of coronavirus should be subs should be become permanent. Mm. So that your referred, your VAT referred is on time. Mm. Yep. The government pays its, uh, its uh, money on time. Yep. The, the smaller businesses are always facilitated because we would want them to keep on expanding and move from being SMEs to multi -co big corporations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the efforts we are going to come should, be, should not be short term. They should be institutionalized after co the COVID is over. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something that um, perhaps at a social level the government has to consider in terms of whether the, the activities that they've currently planned would generate. It's called confidence. Yes. It is, whenever you have a situation like this, uh, you'll find that the national morale can get to an all-time low because of just a certain sense of helplessness. Mm. I'm going by what you've said. You see, when we co efforts are coordinated, whether it is the health sector, whether it is the uh, Ministry of Transport, if it, if it is finance, if it's clear that these efforts are coordinated and they are reading from the same script and whenever solutions are being offered, it's in coordination. One, there's that feeling that the government is actually addressing this issue. That is in control. Yes. And if you sort of like say, okay, some of these things, we're not leaving the counties to manage them. Mm. We are managing it from here. Again, you feel the government is actually in control and they have this. And it will guarantee the things that the uh, professor mentioned. Our trade partners will also feel that this government has its acts together. Mm. And they will see it because industry will be supported. So they can do what they're doing. Our exports will continue. All these things that we're saying will become a possibility because of that coordination. But there's one particular disease that I do not know how we can get rid of because it supersedes all these things. Mm. Uh, even at the heart of a crisis like this, some idiot somewhere is going to put self-interest at the fore of everything. Mm. How do you deal with this? Yep. Even political. L yes. L political interest, financial interest. Let me, let me take you back a bit. I don't know how many of you have spent some time watching the TV when uh, President Donald Trump was Donald Trump was reacting to. Uh, we coronavirus. can go with the first no, one. No, no, it's no, actually okay. Was fine. The, the first the, was perfect. It was nice and descriptive. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Let, I want to go beyond yes. his talking. Mm. Yes. If you look at the people behind him, yep. there was one curious face. I don't know whether any of you noticed him. Mm. Ben Carson. Yes. Mm. What was he doing there? He was sending a message. He was sending a message. That's the confidence I'm talking about. So that when the government spokesman is giving a speech, there should be some medical doctors around there yeah. mm. to see that he is giving his information from an informed, from position. An informed position. Because to me, confidence in the economy is, an, is, is so important. Mm. So if the people realize the government is very sure of what it is doing, mm -hmm. if people don't lose confidence in the economy, there's no reason why things are going to slow down. Because in fact, sometimes the biggest problem in the economic slowdown it's not so much about what people are doing. It's just losing confidence. Because mm. mm. you not buy, you not sell, you hold the money. People are broad, you not sell, ma sell the money, mm. and so on. So that confidence is so important. But to react to your issue of selfishness, I don't want to believe that Kenyans are on average more selfish than any other people, any other citizens of this small planet. They are not. They are not. Our leaders, however, I think it's the circumstances. If, for example, you are selfish, you are greedy, uh, there are any consequences for so doing. Do we reward we those people? We have a people? conducive environment. Yes, do we reward those people, for example, who are very good? Mm. And I want to become a bit radical. If you open our newspapers, listen to our radio stations and TV stations, we give corrupt people a lot of airtime. Yeah. Headlines. Yes, we do. No, we know Over guys who are very good in this country. They have, never even, they have never even killed a cockroach in their own house. Mm. Yes. But we don't publicize them. So I think we create a very good environment for people to be corrupt, to be selfish, to mm. be self-centered. I know there are people who have been uh, price gouging uh, sanitizers. What <laughs> have we done to them? Yeah. Mm. So I think it is a question of carrot and steak. If you do good, we reward you. If you do bad, we punish you. Yeah. Mm. But if the environment is very conducive, people will always be corrupt. People will always be selfish. It, work that way it is the environment, not not our not the way we were born. 
I want to take you back, Prof, to what we were talking about, total lockdown and the impracticability of that happening in Kenya. Yes. So what mitigating measures then should we see? S some solutions, in my opinion, are very simple. I saw that happening in Australia where they are saying that the elderly should be should go to the supermarket at this time. Between 8 and 9 a.m., yeah. I, yes. Mm -hmm. One of the things we need to do immediately is to make sure that supermarkets open 24 hours so that the shopping is distributed. Right. So if the shopping is distributed, we avoid crowds. I remember when the president announced that uh, schools are going to be closed, everybody was running, or rushing <laughs> to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And to me, I was wondering, you are running away from COVID virus, but you are going to the crowd. Going to yeah. So if we can have faced programs, like supermarkets open 24 hours, mm. maybe the government workers being told some people can go at 8 and leave at 5, others can go at 9 and leave at 6, so that we avoid crowds. Yeah. If it is other jobs in the private sector, not everybody will work from home. But you can have fist, fist out working, working environment so that we avoid crowds and so on. Mm. That to me would be one easy, one low lying fruit. Sounds plausible. The, the people who are casual laborers. Yes. So we're telling that the, the, the private sector, the companies to also operate 24 hours. So if people possible. Can, can go to work uh, even throughout the night. Yes. Now that brings in the issue of transport and the availability of transport and security and such. How do you address these challenges? The good thing is if people are active 24 hours, that creates its own security. Yes. Who, who brings security in crabs? You know, this is the only country in the world where people can dust 24 hours, but they don't want to work 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's very annoying. When you are doing very important things, we don't want to work at night. But when you are doing things that don't add value to the economy, we are very happy to do that. To do them. Yeah. Mm. So I think once we make it a habit, people can be going to work whatever time they want. Mm. Where you can avoid crowds. In Darkness. You see, you, you know, you avoid, you avoid crowds in matatus, mm. crowds in working mm. places, and that might mitigate the, the, the flow of COVID-19. Mm. Uh, I, I want to look at, I mean, there have been talk, it's been coming out quite alarmist that, you know, economy... Mm -hmm. or, uh, can, I, can I pause before you ask the question yes. that we yes, take this yes. caller? This is Ajode calling from Kisumu. Good morning, Ajode. Yeah, good morning, Eric. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, yeah so I was wondering, you guys have very awesome solutions, and is there a way... Gone. Unfortunately, dropped. Ajode, let's try call Ajode back and uh, hear what Ajode wanted to say. Mm. So, Ndu, in the meantime. Right, you know, the, the talk around the world, not just in Kenya, about economies then going on their knees, entering into recession, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Realistically, even after this pandemic would be over, because nothing lasts forever. It will come That's to a true. time when it will all end. I like, I like that view. Mm. Um, what would it take to get back on top? Because... You want to strive for that, to get to a place where you're getting back to or getting to a place where you should be able to, to carry through properly. I consider myself an officiary as Kenya's most opt optimistic man. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the last 100 years, we have gone through such episodes and come on top. We had mm. September 11. Mm. The world went into a recession. Mm. We had the economies go into a recession between 2008 and 2009. Mm. We overcame that. We had World War, World War II. Mm. The economy was destroyed. And we came back and rebuilt the world to the prosperous stage it is today. Yeah. So there's no reason why we cannot use past lessons to learn how to deal with COVID-19. Mm. So I believe that if we put the appropriate measures we are talking about at the national level, at the regional level, at the international level, and as he put it, so we put our personal interest aside, there's no reason why we cannot overcome this. Mm. There's no reason why we shall be looking back and saying, I was there when COVID-19 came. Mm -hmm. I played my role in turning the tide against COVID-19. And here we are. Because the human beings by nature are, very, are gifted with a lot of creativity mm -hmm. and ingenuity. Mm -hmm. In fact, as we talk now, maybe by the time we finish this conversation, there'll be a cure or a vaccine for this COVID-19. So my biggest message to Kenyans is, we should never give up. Mm -hmm. Stay never strong, give up. stay we positive. Should not Panic. We have overcome bigger things in the past. You know, Even this one overcome. Ajode, Ajode is back online. Okay. Ajode is in Kisumu. Good morning, Ajode. Yeah, good morning, Eric. Yes, good morning. You are making a point. 
Yeah, I was saying like, okay, Spice FM, this is the best thing from the standard group, I must say that. Mm -hmm. And also, you guys have very awesome solution, and I was wondering, is there a way this is getting back to the government, because we shouldn't just be talking, and uh, this isn't reaching the government to implement the things that you say in the station. So is there a way, the awesome solutions they are coming up with, are they going back to the government? City Muga, respond to that. Uh, the government listens to us very avidly. And we also in touch and in contact with key government uh, personnel who deal with, with such matters. But uh, the answer to your question is, you, my friend, are also part of this government. There is no government as such without the individuals you such as us and yourself. You voted. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you are listening, indeed, you as the government are listening. But as the structured government that we speak of, that we have given the mandate to look after our lives, yes, yes. they also listen. Let's finally uh, f finish the, the conversation this morning with today's proverb, and then you can <laughs> tell us where it's come from and what it means. Yes, and I can mention gorilla. where. I want, where, I want where, to make a small comment, Eva Marawi. No, yes, please, yes, you yes, may. Yes, yes. Oh, very good. Uh, you talked about the positive part of yes, COVID-19. Yes. As an academic, I see a golden opportunity. It this is the first time we are telling academics that you put your thinking into practice. Yes. Sociologists would explain to us how people are going to behave when they are so irritated. And psychologists would do that. Mm -hmm. Economists would tell us how does the economy behave when there is such a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And even the mathematicians would be modeling the progress of this COVID, COVID virus. So let's also not, let not, not, not just look at the negative part, yeah. but also look at the positive part. Absolutely. You know, what you're saying is so true. The Ministry of Finance have an opportunity. All those clever economists and finance people we have there, this is the opportunity to put on the regulatory hat mm. and see how they can do this balancing out of the finances, the social element, the, 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 the economic activities. The saying. They have a perfect excuse. For oh, it. this is a perfect opportunity for all these things mm. to put them to the test and to see if it works because we have a problem that requires a, a solution and an immediate one. And learn out of excuses. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't teach the parts of the forest to an old gorilla. The saying comes from DRC. And early in the morning when you asked, I, well, it may sound facetious, but it was deliberately so. And I said, to understand this, I will give you a saying that you perhaps would use to consider. You cannot teach your grandmother how to suck eggs. Okay, now get you thinking. Can, can mm. you confirm that's not a fake proverb? <laughs> oh, that's why I said I give you a saying to think about. <laughs> it's not even a saying. <laughs> but it brings forth the idea that age has notable, usable, user friendly wisdom that must be taken advantage of. And instead of taking time to try and reinvent the wheel in certain cases, rely on what you know. And this situation that we have here is a perfect example. This, there are parts that are known. We've seen people following in regard to the COVID-19. We don't need to invent ours. We just need to look and tweak it to suit us. That's all we need to do, tweak it to suit us. We also don't need to be clever in trying to find Ways in which we can actually do things that we know we can do because we had HIV, it was virus, That's true. and we had systems that Ebo dealt with Ebola it. Ebola, it's, so we don't, we're not starting from empty. We know where we are starting from, so we need to utilize this. And this is not the opportunity where you politicize things and you bring big government nonsense. This is where you actually find solutions and prove that the positions you are given in government, it's a second chance for all these uh, no-gooders that we've had. Mm. It's a second chance for them to actually prove that we were not entirely wrong in mm. asking them and allowing them to be... Take the Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You don't? You do teach. not teach the parts of the forest to an old gorilla. What about if it is young? It will have to learn from the old gorilla. <laughs> it's taught by its parent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Exenina Iraqi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you also. Um, we'd like to extend an o another open invitation. We'll call you again, uh, especially once the National Treasury t gives us the measures. We'll call you again and at I, some point. And I really want to see what is in the budget. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe it should be called the, the Corona the Budget. The Corona Budget. Yes. Mm -hmm. Forget budget. about calling it cushioning the big fallout. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have been discussing Coronanomics. Yes. <laughs> Coronanomics. <There> you yes. <laughs> Thank you. Asante Sana. Thank, Thank you, you also very much for tuning in to The Situation Room with Kenya's Biggest Conversation. My name is Eric Latif. We have Siti Muga Nduoko and Professor Axel Iraki from the University of Nairobi. Have a good day.